talking today to Charlie Lewis, who is Senior Lecturer at the Link Centre at the University of Witzweiserand, and together with myself, Russell Southwood of Balancing Act, we did a project on consumer issues in telecoms and internet for IDRC, the Canadian Donor Research Organisation. Charlie, tell me about the scope of the project. Uh, thanks, Russell. Yes, it was a project that ran in a number of countries in East Africa, falling under the umbrella of ARICEA, which is the overall regulatory authority or regulatory association in, in East Africa. We looked at five countries, uh, member states of ARICEA. Uh, we did research, qualitative research in those countries, interviewing consumers, finding out what consumers felt about the services they were receiving, the issues and the problems that they identified with the services they were receiving, their views of the regulator and what the regulator in those respective countries was doing to address their issues. Uh, we also did an international survey of international global best practice in the sphere of regulation to protect and empower consumers of ICT goods and services and brought that information together into the final report. And which countries were chosen and why? Uh, we chose countries. We wanted a balance of large and small countries. We wanted rich and poor countries. We wanted Anglophone and Francophone countries. Uh, Francophone was a little bit of a challenge, uh, given that there were very few Francophone members of, of Arisia. But the countries that we went through in the end were Ethiopia, Rwanda, uh, Mauritius, Uganda and Zambia, uh, the five Arisia member countries. And what did the research discover? Uh, a lot of interesting stuff came out from the research. I think the International Best Practice Report was uh, very useful because it's probably the only place that I've seen where looking at what regulators have been doing in relation to consumer protection around the world has been analyzed, brought together, and a number, six or seven main sort of lessons distilled from that, which can be adopted and applied by regulators in developing countries across Africa and other developing countries as well. So I think that international best practice survey was very useful. I think the research that happened in the countries themselves uh, helped us to get a sense of consumers, a sense of frustrations that consumers had and helped us to identify and make a number of recommendations to the Arisia regulators as to how they could strengthen and improve consumer regulation in their particular country. So I think that was uh, useful as well. Uh, there were a number of sort of standard bits of information that came out of, out of the research. I mean, it's no surprise, for example, that pricing of services, particularly in economies where there's a limited amount of competition, was a particular issue for consumers. Uh, no surprise that billing and issues with billing, I didn't make that call. How do I complain about it? Uh, no surprise that that set of issues came up. Uh, no surprise, given that we're dealing with developing countries, and with Africa in particular, that access and coverage, network coverage, came up as a particular issue. No surprise that many of the issues that came up were related to mobile services, because most consumers of telecommunication services in Africa, the overwhelming majority, are mobile consumers. So those things were, were, were not surprising. There were one or two things that did surprise us to some degree, uh, the lack of awareness on the part of consumers of channels of complaint, of the existence even of the regulator, and who they might complain to and how they might complain, and who was looking after and protecting their interests was uh, partially a surprise. We'd expected they were limited, but I think in many countries, not in all of the countries, the level of awareness was extraordinarily low. Um, what was surprising, and it was one of our recommendations for further research, was the prevalence of SIM swapping, the practice of using multiple SIM cards in a single phone. Um, it surprised us in some of the countries, particularly surfaced in Zambia, but it was elsewhere prevalent. Surprised us 
that that was the case and we suspect it's related to issues like patchy network coverage, the cost differential between on-net and off-net calls and it was one of the recommendations the further research be undertaken. In effect consumers are gaming the system aren't they? Yes of course. Yeah. Uh, As you would expect them to do given the multitude of hard to understand <laughs> offers that are made. Yes, and given the relative level of poverty. Yes. So, uh, you know, and the the prevalence of prepaid mobile. So it's much easier to simply take your SIM card out, put in somebody else's SIM uh, or another SIM mm. uh, and, and make a call. You don't need mobile number portability. Yes. You're in fact doing it yourself. And you didn't mention quality of service, which seems to me, yes. particularly in places like Nigeria, is... is a live issue, but a live issue across the continent. Yes, lo lots of issues related to quality of service, and particular things like dropped calls, uh, inability to complete calls, uh, calls where the voice quality was particularly poor. In a number of countries in relation to, or several of the countries in the relation to internet service, there were a number of quality of service issues. So quality of service and the ability of the regulator to impose, enforce, monitor, and punish transgressions of quality of service standards was a problem, yes. And finally, um, what's, what's the outcome of this research? What, 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 what's it going to lead to? Well, I think a number of outcomes. I mean, as I mentioned, the Global Best Practice Report, uh, there are summaries of that available, and hopefully that will assist regulators working to strengthen their consumer protection capacities to adopt some of the recommendations there of go international best practice to strengthen their own work. I think the overall final report produced, I think it was 15 recommendations, starting with strengthening consumer protection in the law, for example, um, and a range of 15 recommendations. Hopefully those will be taken on board by the regulators and will help them to strengthen their regulatory effectiveness in relation to consumer protection. And finally, the phase of the project that's approaching completion is a redraft of the consumer protection guidelines for the Arisio group of regulators. And we hope that at a subsequent process that Arisia will determine that a revised set of consumer protection guidelines will be formalized, formally adopted, and will actually formally now translate into regulators putting consumer protection issues much more at the forefront of their regulatory work. Charlie, thanks for talking to me today. Thank you, my pleasure.